What's up guys, my name is Justin from justthisgood.com and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create an arcade inspired text effect. Alright, so I've just got a blank document open and this is what I'm going to add my text to, but of course you can use whatever you want. So I've got one layer here, it's just got solid black on it. So before we actually do the text, let's do it right and set the scenery with a starry background. This is going to be real quick so don't worry. We're just going to head over to filter, noise, add noise. We're going to use a percent of about 60% at Gaussian distribution and monochromatic. Go ahead and select OK. Then we're going to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And we're going to use a radius of about 3 pixels. And then select OK. And then to turn this noise into a starry background, we're going to go to image, adjustments, levels. And then you're just going to take your left slider all the way to the corner of this curve here. And then bring your right slider all the way in. And just keep inching them in together until you get a starry look that you like. So real simple, you got a starry background. Now let's get on to the meat and potatoes of this tutorial. How to create that kind of Tron mixed with an arcade game or Star Wars inspired text effect. So go ahead and grab your text layer or a text tool and you want to use a font that is kind of blocky um, not a font that is like a handwritten font or something that wouldn't really look realistic when it comes to an arcade game. So I'm using this one here I'm not going to try to pronounce it <laughs> but uh, go ahead and pick a size that kind of fills up your canvas or a size that you want really and then I'll click on my layer to set it and then if I grab my move tool I can actually center it and Photoshop will give me those guides to let me know it's in the middle. Next we're going to right click our layer and go to convert to shape because now we're going to transform it and give it that perspective. So go to edit, transform, perspective. Alright here you're going to grab the top right corner, hold alt and shift and kind of drag it in a little bit and then also grab the bottom right corner, hold alt and shift and drag it out a little bit and then go ahead and select enter and you can also go to edit transform scale and then just grab the top middle slider here and hold shift and just drag it up a little bit to kind of stretch it upwards so go ahead and select OK once you're happy with your transformation I guess at this point you can center again center it again sorry I don't know why we centered it first but now you're gonna go ahead and right click your layer and we're gonna add some blending options to it which is right up here so what we're gonna do to make it transparent is if we click on this default blending options bar right here we can turn the fill opacity all the way down to zero so it kind of makes our text disappear but we can add a stroke right here and click on the color. You can use any color you want, but I kind of imagine this effect with a really light blue color. I'll use the color code 00FFFF. And then you want to set the size of that to just about 3 or 4 pixels, depending on how big your canvas or text is. Position, um, it doesn't really matter. You can play around with it. I'll leave mine and on inside. So... Once you've got the stroke, go ahead and select OK. And then you want to actually have your layer selected and then duplicate it. So I'm going to use the shortcut Command J, but you can right click and duplicate it. Now on this new layer, you're going to grab your move tool and just with the arrow keys on your keyboard, you can just hold shift and move it down a little bit. That'll move it like about 10 pixels at a time, I think. And then if you let go of shift, you can fine tune it with the arrow keys. So I'm just moving it down and maybe to the left a little bit. So once you're happy with where you have it, it kind of gives it a 3D look. You can again click on 
both your layers. I'm going to hold shift to select both my layers at once and I can position it again. I don't know why I keep positioning it. I guess you should just wait until the end. Um, so learn from my mistake there. <laughs> but once you've got that done, we're going to click on the on the text, the first text layer, which is actually the one that's on top technically. And we're going to go back to the blending options. So right click blending options. And this time we're going to add an outer glow. So at this point, this step is completely optional, but we're going to add an outer glow of the same bright blue color. And you can keep it on screen blending mode and just turn the size up to something that that you desire so you can use a higher or lower size but I'll just use a size of about 40 and then you can adjust the opacity to be stronger or lower I think it looks better around 25 percent so again that's totally optional you can just add it on one or both layers but I like it just on, on the top layer and you can also add an inner glow as well with the, the same color and the same settings to kind of give the entire thing that glowing look. Again, you don't want to overdo it and make it look cheesy, but there's your final effect. We set the scenery with the stars, we created the kind of perspective, and we gave it that arcade style look. So if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. And if you want to download the full PSD for this tutorial, it'll be on my website. I'll leave a link in the description. Also, if you want to keep in touch with me on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, my username on all of them is just this good, and I always post sneak peeks of next week's tutorial on there, so feel free to check me out. And once again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.